Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. This is part 16 and today we will finally talk about the matrix product. However, of course, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, this video here will not be so complicated, but we will introduce one of the most important operations in linear algebra. Namely, what we do is that we take one matrix and another one, and then we want to multiply them. And maybe, not so surprising, the result then should be a matrix again. More concretely, this means this new matrix product should represent an abstract operation in linear algebra. However, here please recall, we already know the matrix vector product. It tells us that we can multiply a matrix with a vector and we get a vector out again. Moreover, please also recall that this was a meaningful definition because we used it for the systems of linear equations. So again, we have learned a times b is a vector in Rm. Okay, but now, of course, we could do this operation simultaneously for more than just one vector. So let's assume that we can choose k vectors in Rn. So we have b1, b2 and so on, and each of these vectors has n components. This means it's possible to apply a to each of these vectors. So again, what we get out are exactly k vectors. Moreover, we know each of these vectors has exactly m components. However, now this means we can easily formulate this with an additional matrix. In other words, let's simply put the vectors b1 to bk into the columns of a matrix. Hence, what we get here is a matrix with exactly n rows and k columns. Therefore, it's an element in the set r to the power n times k. And now for us, it's simply possible to apply the matrix A from the left-hand side here. And of course, we could read and define this as a multiplication. Now, what should happen is that we get out a new matrix, again with exactly k columns. Moreover, what we want is that at each column, we just apply the matrix A as before. Therefore, the first column of the new matrix should read AB1. And then we simply continue until we have the last column, ABK. Okay, and with this you should see we have successfully defined a matrix product. However, here please note, it does not work for all possible combinations of matrices. Because we know A is an M times N matrix, and this new matrix here is an N times K matrix. Hence, what we see is that these inner dimensions here have to match. Moreover, we also see that the other two numbers give us the shape of the resulting matrix here. More precisely, we see that this matrix is an element of the set r to the power m times k. So, there you see, now we have a well-defined matrix product for matrices out of these sets here. And therefore, let's put this into a formal definition. So let's define the new matrix product for two matrices where the shapes could be different. So as before, we take an M times N matrix A and the other matrix we just call B. Again, as before, in order to get a meaningful definition, we need that the number of columns for A is the same as the numbers of rows for B. Then, under these assumptions, we can define the so-called general matrix product. And usually, we don't use a dot, we just write a, b. Okay, so now of course, the definition is the same as before, but we can also reformulate this. Simply because we know the row picture from the last video. This means that this matrix vector product here can be interpreted by using the rows of a. More precisely, we simply have to give the rows of A names. In fact, we should do it as we have done it in the last video, so we use alpha with an upper index t. And now please note, by assumption, the length of this row here is the same as the length of this column in B. And now this implies that the inner product alpha1 with B1 makes sense. And indeed, we know that this should be the first entry of the new matrix AB. Moreover, by the row picture we know that the next entry should be alpha2 in the inner product with b1. 
and then we can simply continue this until we get alpha m with b1. And then, of course, not hard to see, the second column should look like this, where we have b2. And then, as before, we can continue this until we have the whole matrix. Hence, what you should see is, in order to get a particular entry of the new matrix AB, we have to calculate an inner product. And the only thing we need to do is to choose the correct row here and the correct column there. In fact, I think this is a very good way to remember this important matrix product. And in order to see how this works, let's look at an example. So for A, let's choose a 2 times 3 matrix with entries 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now for the matrix B, you know we need exactly 3 rows. And maybe here, let's take two columns. So now we know these two matrices can be multiplied. And indeed, what should come out is a 2 times 2 matrix. Now, if you first start calculating matrix products, I would suggest using a nice scheme for writing it down. And what I mean by that is to push the first matrix here on the left down. This means here in between, you have a nice table where you can put in the result. So you should see, all possible combinations of rows and columns are already here. In other words, here in this case, we have four combinations. And now what you can do is to pick any row in the matrix A, for example this one, and any column in the matrix B, for example this one. And then, at the imaginary intersection point here, you put down the result of your inner product. And of course, the inner product you calculate as usual, so you put these two vectors together. More precisely, here we have 4 times 1, plus 5 times 0, plus 6 times 1. So you see, the result of this is simply 10. Okay, then in the next step, not so surprising, you do it for all the other combinations as well. So here, we would have 1 times 1, plus 2 times 0, plus 3 times 1. Hence, we simply get 4. So then, let's continue with the next combination. So we have 1 times 0, plus 2 times 1, plus 3 times 1. Therefore, this is 5. And then, finally, the last combination would be this row with this column. And there, I can immediately tell you, we get out 11. So in summary, you see, the scheme shows us that the matrix product AB is a 2 times 2 matrix. And we get the entries 4, 5, 10, 11. So what we see here is, calculating a matrix product is not complicated at all. So in general, you just need to know how to calculate the standard inner product. And moreover, you need to be a little bit careful that the two matrices fit together. Okay, so this is the definition, and in the next video, we can talk about the properties of this new matrix product. So I hope I see you there, and have a nice day. Bye.